In this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about the Capitals' play as of late. They got a big win against the Oilers. How do they maintain that consistency going forward? Then later in the show, we will talk about the myriad of injuries on this Capitals team. But there is some good news on the Nick Backstrom and Tom Wilson front. And then in the final segment, we will talk about Alex Ovechkin as he continues to knock down one record after the other after the other. We'll talk about all of that and more next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen or view of the day. Yes, this podcast is also available in video form. So head on over to YouTube and check it out. And when you're on YouTube, make sure and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. It really helps grow the channel. My name is Dan Holmey. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. So in this edition of Locked On Capitals, I am joined by Bob Matthews of the Bob Matthews Podcast. Bob, welcome to the show. Dan, thanks so much for having me. I, I feel so inadequate here. Man, th this production value you've got here, <laughs> this is insane. And the background and everything, I I I'm just trying to adjust the selfie light that I have here so everybody can see me. And and now that I see myself there on camera, maybe I ought to just take it away like that. It might improve things. <laughs> it's good to be with you. Thanks for, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show here. So, I mean, just to get going here, this Capitals team, you know, in the beginning of the season, everyone talked about how they're going to be a bubble team. And, you know, they're going to be lucky to make it in the playoffs in general. And the Caps lose four in a row. Uh, the Caps are now five, six in two. They're sixth in the Metro. What went wrong with this team? I guess we could point to some of the injuries, but in your assessment, what is ailing this Capitals team? I think it's it's what you just said, the injuries. I mean, uh, you know, the core is what the core is of this team. And when you look at it and you say, okay, it was one thing when Nicholas Backstrom and Tom Wilson weren't there, but now you've got John Carlson, you've got Dmitry Orlov. Uh, help me out. Who am I missing? Because, you know, Beck Malenstein, but I was going to list him and, and, and Connor Brown as two of the last ones. Uh, on that list. But I mean, you've got, I, I totaled it up the other day, more than half of what you consider this team's, this team's core, you know, that, that was there when it won the cup in 2018 is on the injury, TJ Oshie on the injury list. And man, you, I don't know any team out there. You lose that many guys this early in the season uh, can, you know, hope for anything better than, than 500 at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's been tough going here. And, you know, I listen to all the talking heads and they're like, you know, this team is going to be a bubble team. They'll be lucky to make it to the playoffs. And even a lot of the Caps beat writers had said it. And, you know, I looked in the offseason and I saw that they picked up Connor Brown and Dylan Strom and Darcy Kemper, all these huge names. And you kind of mix that in a pot. And I thought, well, that is a pretty good recipe for success here. But the Caps have struggled and, you know, kind of adding insult to injury. They lose to the Arizona Coyotes, you know, one of the worst teams in the NHL. Um, did you get a chance to watch the game at all? Um, yeah. Where they had the lead almost the entire game, and then they lost it in the last period. Again, tell me if you've seen this movie before. When you take a look at this team, and you take a look at the Coyotes game in particular, what was your assessment of what went wrong in that game in particular? Well, I think it was the same thing that's been happening in the majority of this losing streak. And it actually, believe it or not, gives me a little bit of comfort in the fact that all of these games they're losing, they're losing them two to one, three to two, three to one with an empty net goal, stuff like that. What that says to me is that, you know, Darcy Kemper and Charlie Lindgren are playing great. And if they're playing great, once this team gets healthy, I think they're going to be able to make a run, get back into playoff contention, and they could be a dangerous team, 
you know, in the postseason. Um, yeah, it would be one thing, you know, we're not seeing what we saw this time last year that Peter Laviolette was not only playing, you know, a, a merry-go-round with goalies from game to game, but how many times last year did we see the starting goalie pulled for the other guy? You know, that hasn't happened yet this season. I Maybe it will, but, it, you know, at this point, the Capitals have two really good goaltenders and, you know, defense travels in sports. So if they can keep up this level of goaltending throughout the year, yeah, eventually these guys are going to get healthy. And I always like to try to at least see a little, look a little bit on the optimistic side. Um, you know, hopefully that means that once these guys start to get back and they start scoring more goals, um, it's going to be a different story. Yeah, and you know, just taking a look at the games for me, it's the Capitals not playing a complete game. I know there's a lot of cliches that you hear, but they got to play more five-on-five -five hockey. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people have said, you know, Darcy Kemper has not been as advertised. And I'm like, he has kept the Capitals in these games. If it wasn't Absolutely. for Darcy, if it wasn't for Charlie, these games would have been lost by a larger margin here. But this Metro division... As we look at it, everyone pegged the Rangers and the Hurricanes to be the top of the division. But as it turns out, um, it is as of right now, it hasn't been turning out that way so far. It's the Devils last I checked. Um, so, you know, not everything has been according to plan. The Caps lose their fourth game in a row in a span of six nights. Um, the Penguins are winless in their past seven games. Mm -hmm. um, so just taking a, a look around this Metro division, it hasn't gone the way a lot of the pundits or the talking heads have thought it's going to go. In your assessment, where do the Capitals finish at the end of the year? Are they going to be a bubble team? Are they going to make it to the playoffs at all? What are your projections for the Caps? Well, you know, I always uh, I always like to use history as a guide. And unlike with the other, t other team that I cover on our podcast, uh, the Washington Commanders, um, you can give, uh, at least in my opinion, you can give the Capitals the benefit of the doubt just based on past history. This is one of the most consistently successful and winning teams, not just in hockey, but in sports over the last 40 years. This team has made the playoffs 32 of the last 40 years. So in my assessment, you know, they're beat up right now. Again, they've got so many of their top six guys and top defensemen out that you got to say, look, just tread water until Christmas. Hopefully some of those guys start coming back at some point in time. And then I fully expect that they're capable of making a run and, you know, and, and getting into the playoffs after that, again, they own the regular season historically. It's a whole different kettle of fish when you get to the playoffs. But all you want to do is get into the tournament and then see what happens from there. And I'm actually excited this year. Again, because of the strong goaltending, you know, that could mean that this team might have, you know, what is it, three, four straight years now with a first round exit. This could be the year that, that Brian McClellan has finally um, gotten the formula right, that they can make a deep run. I mean, at the, at the beginning of the year, everybody was saying what a great offseason McClellan had with all the moves that he was making. Yeah, and I mean, I gave him A-plus marks. I was a little hard on Brian McClellan last season when he did nothing to rectify mm -hmm. the goaltending situation, but then, you know, he totally uh, redeemed himself and made some really great acquisitions here. All right, so after the break here, we're going to talk about the myriad of injuries on this team that I think are contributing to the Caps' losses. We'll talk about that next. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy. I wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I wanted to see what the hype was about. Now I've been taking it a few months and it doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It kind of has a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to taking each morning. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all of these things. Now, I personally take it because I have young children at home. And if you have young children at home, you can relate that you need that extra energy. 
It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything, while still tasting good. It supports better sleep quality and recover supports mental clarity and alertness. It's the one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the latest of uh, third party iterations and third party testing. So, the biggest thing about taking a multivitamin is being consistent and taking it every day. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up on the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this episode, we are joined by Bob Matthews of the Bob Matthews Podcast. And in this next segment here, we're going to talk about all the injuries on this Caps team. You know, I talked about in the last podcast, I don't ever remember another time in history of watching this team that this Caps team has faced so many injuries. Uh, just to look at the roster of injured players right now, Dmitry Orloff, John Carlson, Beck Malenstein, TJ Oshie, Connor Brown, Carl Hagelin, Tom Wilson, Nicholas Backstrom. Oh my. When you take a look at that long injury list of players, you got to think that has a big impact on this team. You know, I'm often asked on this show, well, why are the Capitals losing all these uh, games? What are your thoughts on all the injuries facing this team? Can you recall a time of watching the Capitals that you remember all these injured players at one time? No, no, not at all. Of course, you know, having said that, it, it's probably part and parcel with the fact that, you know, you've decided for good or ill, you're going to keep this core together um, when you've maybe had chances to break it up and, and get younger players in. And, and I don't fault them for that. I mean, you want to give Alex Ovechkin every single solitary chance, you know, to go as far as he can every year because of what he's done for you. But no, I, I can't ever remember seeing this many injuries, especially to top guys, um, you know, in the past. And, you know, again, with you know you, oh, the defensive side, I mean, think about it. Your top two guys, your top two defensemen are out, and we don't know for how long. I mean, we've heard, you know, John Carlson's been in a non-contact jersey, and he might be close to coming back. But, you know, with the NFL injury rule or the NHL injury rules, you know, we just never know. So, uh, but no, I've, I've never seen it like this for them before. Yeah, and just as a note, we are recording this on Monday before the Capitals take on the Oilers here. But the a word that we have today is John Carlson will not play tonight against the Oilers. Right. Dmitry Orloff will be a game time decision. So they have made some additions to try to fix what ails them. The Caps went out and picked up Sonny Milano. They picked him up from the Flames where he was dropped on a PTO. And then Sunday, they picked up Nicholas Abe Kubel, uh, ostensibly to fill in on the fourth line left wing. I kind of like those moves so far. I have not seen, obviously we have not seen Obel in the lineup yet as he's going to play his first game on the Capitals tonight. But Sonny Milano, I thought, had a good nose for the puck and for the net. He had a couple scoring opportunities. And it's a pretty great feat if you think about it. He had no practices with the Capitals except for a pregame skate. What was your assessment on Sonny Milano in his first game? Yeah, I, you know, it's one of those things where, to me, you look at it and say, okay, how many do you hear Joe Bettinati saying his name? Do you hear Craig Laughlin saying his name on the broadcast? And we heard it a couple of times. So, you know, that's good. And again, it's one of those things where, like you said, pregame skate was the first time he'd ever skated with any of these guys. So it's going to take some time for him to kind of get acclimated. It, the same thing with, uh, uh, Samantha Pell, the Washington Post and I were talking about this, you know, is Ovi off to a slow start or, you know, is it father time that's catching up with him? Or is it just that he's playing with so many different guys now that he's never played with before? You know, it takes some time for everybody to get acclimated to each other. But I did like the, I did like what we saw from Milano when, when he was out there the other night. And, uh, you know, again, hopefully we see a little bit more tonight, a little bit more the next game. Uh, and, and, you know, again, it's just you can't press the panic button yet. I mean, for, you know, the Oilers uh, coming into Cap One Arena on Monday night, they're seven and five. And this is a team that, 
you know, everybody looks at is if not being a perennial contender right now, you know, at least a, a team that you figure is going to be in the playoffs and maybe make it to the to the second round at least. Yeah, so I mean, they did add some key uh, play- players to this team, and you know, one of the players uh, that's on the roster right now is Connor McMichael, a mm-hmm. real lightning rod. Anytime I bring up his name, I hear all about it on Twitter and YouTube that you know he's not getting his opportunity. Um, it's my contention, my belief that if Connor McMichael does not get his opportunity or he does not get enough playing time for the Caps that he should go down to Hershey and get that time. But what has changed within the last couple of weeks here is there's a lot of injuries on this team. So Connor McMichael, Joe Snively, uh, perhaps uh, perhaps Lucas Johansson will finally get their opportunity. Um, in this podcast throughout the summer, I talked about how everyone wants to see this team get younger and faster. They're going to get their wish based on necessity. Talk right. to me a little bit about Connor McMichael, Um, And, you know, Joe Snively and Lucas Johansson, this to me seems like a really great opportunity for those guys to prove themselves. Yeah, I I mean, this team has got to get younger at some point. And, you know, this may just be where we are now. You might not be able to keep TJ Oshie healthy for an entire season anymore. Nicholas Backstrom may not, you know, maybe he comes back. Maybe he doesn't. I mean, this, you know, hip resurfacing is, you know, that's that's a serious thing. I wish we'd see Connor McMichael get some real time at center, you know, put him on the third line at center and see what he can do. You know, all we've heard is this kid is, you know, he's going to be good. He's going to be good. He's going to be good. Well, let's see it. You know, I think Peter Laviolette, a lot of times he likes to go with the vets and you can understand that, but you know, at a certain point of time, You've, you've got a fish or cut bait with these guys. And you're right. If you don't want to put him there on one of the top three lines, then yeah, send him down to Hershey and, and let him get some seasoning there. I mean, he obviously he's been around the big club enough to know how to act uh, with an NHL club, but if you're not going to put him on the ice and give him the time, then uh, you know, then what are we doing here? Yeah, and that's my belief on it. But, you know, the thing for me for Connor McMichael is I don't think he's going to be best served, you know, as a fourth line left wing. Intrinsically, he is a center. And I think that that is where he's going to flourish and do his best. You know, I think that ultimately, if you were going to ask Connor McMichael, you know, would you want to play on left wing if it meant you got to play every day? I understand these conversations don't happen. But if they did, I think, of course, he would say, yes, I want to do that. But you got to think about the player in their development. You know, he is one of the crown jewels of the Washington Capitals organization, along with like Hendricks LaPierre. Um, so I think that, you know, if there's not a spot, don't keep him up in the press box. Send him down to Hershey where they can get some solid playing time. Exactly. There was there was some great news. Um, For the Capitals today, as Tom Wilson and Nick Backstrom took to the ice, two key players uh, that I could say probably contribute to the Capitals' losses, Nick Backstrom, you know, the records speak for, uh, for himself, a ton of assists, Tom Wilson, who is a great goal scorer, but also provides that intimidation factor. For me, that's one of the things that I notice on the ice is there's a lot of people pushing this Caps team around because they're like, well, you don't got the sheriff on your team right now. You don't got Tom Wilson. What are you going to do about it? So I think it is the alpha male syndrome out there where you have Garnet Hathaway out there trying to fight off all these guys because there's not a lot of tough guys on this team. Alex Ovechkin, if provoked, will fight, but it's been since 2019 since he dropped the gloves gloves against Shvechnikov, and it was a knockout. So I know what I was you know. Say he knocked him out too. <laughs> you know you don't want you don't want to rile him up because you know what he's capable of. So you know I don't want to say that you know fighting has a huge role in this team, but Tom Wilson does uh, provide a certain level of you're not going to mess with our players, and if you do. I'm going to have a shift with you in this game and I'm going to settle the score here. So I think that the caps are missing that tough aspect. You know, they had it for a couple games or a few there with Beck Malenstein. Beck Malenstein is one of the guys that says he relishes a physical game. And, you know, he got a broken finger uh, laying in front of a shot there. So not a really great thing there, but this was um, in Washington hockey. Now they were writing as the Washington capitals navigate a myriad of injuries. They got more welcome news on the Nicholas Backstrom and Tom Wilson front. According to Peter Laviolette, both Backstrom and Wilson have taken to the ice to skate on their own. However, they haven't skated with the main group yet, and the road to recovery is still a long one. One of the things that we know is that Tom Wilson is scheduled to come back anywhere between Thanksgiving and Christmas, 
And Nick Backstrom is uncertain. It's uncertain if we will see him at all this year. Talk to me a little bit about Tom and Nick and their huge contributions to this team and the vacuum uh, when they're out of the lineup. And I, I think if if you were going to pick one that you need in the lineup more than the other, I think it would be Tom Wilson. And for anybody who who doesn't think that his presence is a big one, both literally and figuratively out there, you know, ask the New York Rangers how they feel right. not having Wilson in the lineup because he lives rent free in their collective head. Um you've got to, it would be great to get them both back. I think there is enough talent at center that certainly I'd love to see Nicholas Backstrom back, but if he misses the entire year, if his career's over again, you've got, you've getting his nuts off. You've got, I think Connor McMichael that you've got to put on a line. You've still got Lars Eller. So the center position is deep, but, but yeah, I mean, Wilson is, a unicorn. I, I know that he is despised throughout the league, uh, but that's only because he doesn't play for any other fans team. Uh, you put him on anybody else's team. He's welcome with open arms. And it's the same for GMs who say they don't, they don't like him. That's only because he's not with them. Um, the fact that he's so big and he's so fast, he's, you know, he's one of the best fight. He's one of the toughest guys in the league, one of the best fighters in the league, and he can score goals. I mean, it, it's when when I saw that he was going to miss the first part of the year, I said, OK, it's going to be a slog without him. Forget all the other injuries. It was going to be a slog without Wilson. That's the biggest hole as far as I'm concerned that they that they've had to fill. Yeah, because I mean, it's the I'm not trying to, you know, pigeonhole him in a corner and saying he's just a goon. He's a tough guy. He scored 20 plus goals for this team last year, right. but definitely his frame and just who he is as a person is and an enforcer uh, definitely is missing from this team. All right, so after the break here, we are going to talk about Alex Ovechkin and all the milestones that he keeps knocking off one after the other. We'll talk about that next. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. In this episode, I am joined by Bob Matthews of the Bob Matthews Podcast. So Alex Ovechkin is one of the bright spots in this Capitals a team. You know, so far, this team has not played that great. Um, if you take a look at it, they're sixth in the Metro and they have 12 points so far. So definitely not the way the Capitals want things to be going here. But Alex Ovechkin continues to produce. Um, Alex, 787, or excuse me, 787th career goal, moving him past Gordy Howe with 786 for the most goals scored by a player with a single franchise. You know, one of the things about watching Alex Ovechkin, you don't have to be a fan of the Capitals. You can be a fan of the NHL in general is that if you're watching Alex out on the ice, chances are he is going to break some sort of milestone, uh, some sort of record. Talk to me a little bit about Alex Ovechkin, as it seems like every time he hits the ice, he's making history. It's it's incredible. I, I think, and I think Capitals fans get it, but I mean, what we are seeing in Alex Ovechkin is quite literally one of the three or four greatest hockey players in NHL history. I mean, he's not only his, is he up? Yeah, obviously he's up there with Gretzky, with Gordy Howe, with Rocket Richard. I mean, you know, you name it. Alex Ovechkin is now in the pantheon of the greatest players ever to lace up a pair of skates in the NHL. And, you know, you're right. You know, we're talking about him having just a so so start. And I don't know, I, I'm not sure what his stats are right off the bat, but if the, you know, it, if they've played 11 games, he's got nine points or something like that. So it's only a slow start by OV standards. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's just nobody else to key on um, defensively for other teams. So, you know, they can, they can gear so much of their energy towards shutting down Alex Ovechkin. But I mean, you know, he, he's just, he will, go down, um, you know, four or five years from now when his career is over as one of the greatest um, pro athletes in Washington history. You know, he'll be he'll be up there with with Sonny and and Billy and, you know, uh, uh, Joe Theismann, the Hogs, the Fun Bunch, you name it. You know, Ovechkin is in that uh, is in that pantheon now. 
Yeah, and I, it's just a really special moment. You know, we're not looking at some archival footage of Wayne Gretzky back from the yeah. 80s. We're seeing history uh, in real time here. Ovi is now 13 goals away from 800, 15 from passing Howe for second on the NHL's all-time goal list and 108 from breaking Wayne Gretzky. So I do think it is in shot for him. I do think it is possible for him to uh, get Wayne, uh, past Wayne Gretzky. I want to say the projection on it is that he has to hit something like 32 goals a year, which mm-hmm. definitely seems like it's in his wheelhouse here. So if, the you, next- look, if you look at, at, at those other great goal scores, if you look at their careers, again, if you let history be your guide, yeah, uh, it, it's not only entirely possible, but it's going to happen because it's not like, any of those guys, you know, Gretzky, Howe, et cetera, et cetera. It's not like they fell off a cliff and then were just scoring 10 or 15 goals a year the last three or four years of their career. I mean, these are guys that are that are still that were still 30 goal scorers in the last two, three and four years of their career. So there's there's absolutely no reason to think that that Ovi's not going to do it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it is possible for him to do it. I mean, the only thing that I could see holding him back is if he sustained some sort of major injury. Uh, you know what they say, the Russian machine never breaks. And Alex, right. Ovechkin, Alex Ovechkin, for the most part, is unbreakable. Uh, sometimes we hear about in the offseason that he was playing with a separated shoulder um, or something like that. But he normally muscles through any injuries uh, that he faces. All right, Bob, before I let you go here, why don't you tell everyone where we can find your work? Well, you can find it on uh, the Hockey Podcast Network's um, uh, webpage. And just the easiest thing, just type in Hockey Podcast Network on Google. It'll take you right to it. uh, You can also subscribe. uh, Go to my Twitter page. Give me a follow. Every time uh, we drop a new episode, I'll put it up there. It's at Bob Matthews. 965. You can also find it at Spotify and iTunes and wherever fine podcasts are sold. And Dan, thank you so much for having me on. I really had a good time and would love to come back and be with you again. Anytime you you need a guest, just give me a holler. That would be great. And just to all the Washington fans here, it's not just the Capitals. You cover the Commanders as well, right? We also cover the commanders uh, on our on our podcast. Yeah. Uh, And we get, you know, the thing about our show that we think is is a little bit different um, because uh, I was a sports reporter for so many years and a journalist is that we take you inside the locker room. um, You know, we get you we we do a lot of uh, post-game interviews, both with the Commanders and with the Caps. Um, so you're going to get something that we think is a little, you know, unique to our show. We also have a lot of fun with it. So, um, you know, just give us a try. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, you can always drop us if you don't like it. But we think if you'll come, if you come in the door, you're going to stay. All right, Bob, thank you for joining us today. And thank you for making Locked On Capitals your first listen. For your next listen, listen, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. So once again, thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, where it's your team every day. And I'll talk to you again next time.